The Irish star, who was best known for her hit Nothing Compares to You, rose to fame in the late 1980s and early 1990s, making headlines around the world for her outspoken social and political views. And while many may have coveted her fame, behind the scenes her life was much darker than many might have expected with the talented musician reportedly having a traumatic past. Claiming she'd been psychologically, physically, and sexually abused by her mother, Marie, during her childhood. A Sky documentary about O'Connor titled Nothing Compares, which was scheduled to be shown on July 29th, before the tragic news broke, sees the singer open up about her suffering as a child and explains how music became a form of therapy for her. O'Connor recalls in the program how her mother once made her live in their garden 24-7 for a week or two when she was just eight years old and told how she would be screaming, begging her to let me in. This experience is said to have inspired her song Troy from her 1987 debut album, The Lion and the Cobra. I spent my entire childhood being beaten up because of the social conditions under which my mother grew up, she continues. There was no therapy when I was growing up so the reason I got into music was therapy. It was such a shock for me to become a pop star, it's not what I wanted. I just wanted to scream. Speaking to people in 2012, she went on to compare her home life to a torture chamber and she also previously told The Guardian how as she got older, her mother encouraged her to steal and she became addicted to shoplifting. As a result, she ended up getting caught and was sent to a religious institution in Dublin for 18 months when she was just 15. O'Connor opened up about her time at Ingrienan Training Center in an article in the Washington Post in 2010, writing, When I was a young girl, my mother, an abusive, less-than-perfect parent, encouraged me to shoplift. After being caught once too often, I spent 18 months in Ingrienan Training Center, an institution in Dublin for girls with behavioral problems, at the recommendation of a social worker. And Grianon was one of the now infamous church-sponsored Magdalen Laundries, which housed pregnant teenagers and incooperative young women. We worked in the basement, washing priests' clothes in sinks with cold water and bars of soap. We studied math and typing. We had limited contact with our families. We earned no wages. One of the nuns, at least, was kind to me and gave me my first guitar. O'Connor was able to discover her passion for music while at the institution and it's reported that one of her teachers helped her get her first break, performing at a wedding. While singing, she captured the attention of the drummer from an Irish band called Tua Nua and the pair teamed up to write a song. However, she has previously described her stay at Ingrienan as being filled with agony and terror. In an article from Spin magazine in 1990, She's quoted as saying, I have never, and probably will never experience such panic and terror and agony over anything like I did at that place. Despite enduring all of this, O'Connor claimed that she had been able to forgive her mother, who died in a car accident in 1985, telling people, I forgive my mother, she just wasn't well. She expanded on this to The Guardian, adding, I think she was an evil person. When I look at photos of the woman she was before she got married, she was a joyful, gleaming, happy young woman, and I feel something possessed her. It was the devil in her. While O'Connor may have gone on to build a successful career and found therapy through her music, her adult life was still plagued with suffering as she struggled with her mental health. She spoke openly about how she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and had suicidal thoughts. In 2012 she cancelled a tour saying that she had suffered a very serious breakdown, and then in November 2015, posted a message on Facebook saying she had taken an overdose at a hotel in Ireland. Her mental health had taken a nosedive after one of her children became seriously ill. O'Connor had also undergone a radical hysterectomy and went through surgical menopause as a result. A few years later in 2018, it seemed like O'Connor had found some peace through religion after converting to Islam and adopting the name Shuhada, Sadakat. She said at the time, Christianity lied to me as an Irish person. Christianity did nothing but rape the people of Ireland, metaphorically and literally. That's why I like Islam. Because I can take the things I embraced with me. Jesus is still there but it's the Jesus that makes sense to me. However, 
In an interview with The Guardian in 2021 she revealed she had spent the best part of six years at a psychiatric hospital and then in January 2022 her family was struck by tragedy when her 17-year-old son Shane was found dead. The mum of four described him as being the love of her life in one of her final social media posts. Following the news that Sinead had passed, her family said in a statement on Wednesday evening, It is with great sadness that we announce the passing of our beloved Sinead. Her family and friends are devastated and have requested privacy at this very difficult time. As we come to the end of this video, I wanted to take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you. Your time, attention, and support mean the world to me, and I am truly thankful for your presence here. So, thank you for being a part of this adventure. I look forward to many more shared experiences, discussions, and moments in the future. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so that we can stay connected.